Crush FTP also supports ad hoc sharing of files. I'm going to log in as an admin user here and configure what's needed to use this. I'm going to go to Preferences, General, and scroll down to my SMTP server settings. This will be used for sending the outgoing email. Gmail uses port 465, so I'm adding a colon 465. And I'm going to test to make sure the settings are correct. The SMTP server has been validated. Now I'm going to go to the user manager and give my user permission to do shares. My user. Now I've got the folder selected that I want to allow them to share from, and I'm going to enable the permission for share and publish. Save changes and go log in as my user. Now if I right click on an item here, I can select share and fill out the form to send an email to somebody. By default, the configuration is going to give us a copy of the file that I'm sharing and it's going to last for 29 days before that copy is deleted. There's also more advanced settings that you can use. If you enable advanced, I can say I just want to use a reference to the file. This is like a shortcut or alias, so there's no copy of the file made. There's just temporary access being given to the particular file that you're sharing out. I'm going to share it out for two days and allow only three uses of the link that I'm sending out. Once the link has been used three times, it will no longer function. You can customize the email if you'd like to alter it. I can even attach the file if the file is less than 10 megabyte. So I'm going to send this file out. Direct link to file will make the link contain the file name as well, so clicking on the link will take you directly to this file. I'm going to turn that off for right now and click send. If I wanted at this point, I could also open this up in my email client by clicking this link and send it to other people that might be in my address book. Here's a link that was just emailed out to ben at crushftp.com and it's using a randomly generated four character username and four character password making for an eight character token that authenticates the user for the item that you shared. I'm going to click this now and you'll see that I now have access to the one item that was being shared out. If the user who created the share wanted to remove access they can use the Manage Shares button to revoke access. The Manage Shares button is not enabled by default, so if you want a user to be able to manage their own shares, log in as your administration user, go to your admin, user manager, and I'm going to enable it for all users, so I'm just going to edit the default user and it's a button that I want to add, so I'm just going to type in button to search for the buttons area, and I'm going to add the button Manage Shares. Click OK, OK, OK. I'm going to move the button up just a little bit so it appears better in the list, and I only want it to appear in the menu bar. Save Changes, and now let's switch back to my user to manage that share. And we can see the one share that we sent out to Ben at crushftp.com. And if we want to get rid of this and revoke access, we can click delete. And now access has been removed from that item that we were sharing. Every aspect about the sharing process can be customized. I'm going to log back in as my admin user. show you a few of the customizations. I'm going to 
use quick jump to jump down to the web interface section and I'm going to enable the section for customizations. I'm interested in sharing customizations, so I'm going to filter down on the word share. First thing I'm going to enable is automatic share uploaded item. So when a user uploads items using the web interface, it's going to pop open the share interface so that they can share those items as well. I'm also going to set the default from address be coming from me. And I'm going to hide the from address so th that they can't even edit it. And as you can see, there's many different customizations that can be done. I'm just going to show you a few quick ones here. We're going to save this and go test it out now. I'm going to log in as my user. And I'm going to upload an item here. Start uploading. And when it finished, it automatically popped open the share interface. I can't change who it's coming from. That was configured in the, the customization that we did. But I can send it to myself. You can default all of these items. You can default it to reference. You can default it to having uh, attachments to be done. Everything is controllable there. It's also possible the user may want to give out a temporary folder to allow somebody to send files back to them. So I'm going to create a folder for my friend. And I want to share this to them. So I'm going to right click, share. I'm going to use advanced mode and I'm going to share it by reference and I'm going to give them full access to it. So when they upload items into this item that we shared by reference, they'll be uploading directly into my real folder here. I can fill in their email here or I can turn this off and just send it through my email client. I'm going to hit send and I have my link and I can copy that and send that to my friend. So as you can see, the ad hoc sharing system is completely customizable. You can change the wording, you can change the coloring, you can change what items are visible and how they work. Everything is controllable to set it up the way that you want it to work for your business.